Hey guys, MVC here for the ScanPro Gaming Tag for another mouse review. This time we have the Logitech G402 Hyperion Fury 4000 DPI Optical Gaming Mouse, designed specifically for first person shooter players. Now, for those of you that have been following the channel for some time now, you can probably cast your eyes back to the G502 review, the Proteus Core Optical Gaming Mouse with a ridiculous high DPI. And you remember that my only real quabble with it was not the shape, transitioning from my usual Razer Death Adder 3.5G, but instead the weight because even with the rate weights removed this was a ridiculously heavy mouse and I just couldn't use it for first person shooters so what Logitech have done is essentially take this and make it into this adjusting the shape a little bit which we'll get into later on removing the braided cable removing the metal scroll wheel and a few other features here and there and essentially we're left with a lightweight mouse more suitable to the fast paced first person shooter player like me but of course we'll get into the finer details very shortly but that's kind of what the point of this review is going to be we're going to compare the two mice see who's going to buy which one or that one and come back right at the end with my conclusions as to how I think the mouse performed but in fact if you don't want to watch the video let me just go and say if you're an FPS player and you're in the market for an optical gaming mouse this is the one to buy today but yeah let's go ahead anyway and jump into the review and you can get a bit more of a detailed breakdown. The G402 is a right-handed ergonomic design mouse for both claw and palm grip. It is an update to the G502 shape, which was originally an update to the G400S or MX518 shape, aiming to increase functionality without taking away from that recognized form factor. It's made up of lightweight materials with rubber grips, good for both sweaty and non-sweaty palms, I have to point that out, and the clicks are extremely responsive, including the mouse wheel. Now inside of the mouse is a 32-bit ARM processor powering the Fusion engine. Now the sensor is the same as that found in the G100S, However, the Fusion engine, which works in tandem with a accelerometer and gyroscope, pushes the max tracking speed further, meaning it does not malfunction at fast mouse swipes, which means it's critically good for FPS games especially. Now, there's a 7-foot non-braided cable with USB connection enabling a maximum polar rate of 1000 Hz. In terms of the difference between the two, the G402 comes in slightly lighter at 108 grams, whereas the G502 is 121 minimum, which was my main issue with it. And through the customizable weights, we'll go all the way up to 139. The G402 also lacks onboard profiles, although you can do it in the drivers, and has just eight programmable buttons over the 11 on the G502, lacking the profile switch on the top, the dedicated one, plus of course the left and right on the scroll wheel. And finally the scroll wheel on the G402 does not have the dual mode hyper scroll, meaning you can't just scroll it and it will go on forever until it stops spinning. Now I guess the main difference is in the sensor. The G402 essentially improves the G100S sensor, whereas the G502 was designed specifically for that mouse in cooperation with Pixar and boasts a couple of additional features such as the option to enable prediction, plus on top of that, the option to customize lift off distance through surface calibration. And essentially what we're getting is a stripped down G502 designed specifically for first person shooter competitive players. And that's exactly what I wanted after reviewing the G502. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into a quick look at the drivers. Okay, so before we jump into some gameplay, have a look at how the mouse performs, acceleration perhaps inherent or not, and everything else. Let's first have a look at the Logitech Gaming software, and just exactly what you're getting for your money, and so that you can go back to the G502 review and compare this drivers yourself and see if there's any features perhaps missing that you want. But here we can run the G502 from either the onboard memory using profile stored on the mouse. Good for people like me that travel around to an event and take their mouse with them. You're going to be able to take your settings. And uh, secondly, through automatic game detection using profile stored on the computer. Now in this, if we go ahead and enable per profile pointer settings, you can see you can tie it up to a game executable file right here and it's going to run all your different DPI steps. But to be honest, five DPI steps on two buttons right here is plenty for me anyway and I'll never see the need to come off onboard memory. Now in here it looks exactly the same. We've got a polling rate or a report rate here of up to 1000 which is 1ms. Of course you want the fastest right here. We've got five DPI settings. You can change in increments of 80 all of which are native as well. So you're going to get a very responsive mouse and on top of that there is no smoothing or processing below 2000 DPI which is something that's become very inherent in some of the new gaming mice today. 
Smoothing essentially smooths out cursor movement so you don't get too much jittering when you're drawing lines on paint or even playing certain games at higher DPI levels. And Logic have been reported in saying, like I said, there is no smoothing but low 2000 DPI. So you are going to get an extremely responsive mouse, which is an issue that I've always had trying to transition away from my death adder. No mouse has really felt as responsive as it, and the G402 definitely does. Now on top of that, we can increase the DPI all the way up to 4,000 and we have a maximum of five DPI steps right here, as you can see, all the way up to 4,000 if you want it, but we run on the third profile anyway. And on top of that, you can set a DPI shift if you want, which I have got right here. But if we go ahead to the left hand side, you can see I've already rebound it away, set it up to caps lock, which happens to be my push to talk button. But you can set it up here if you want, and you can also shut it up to G shift, which is going to give you a second functionality on every button, which again is a neat feature to have if you play MMOs and stuff like that. If we go ahead and just set it back to caps lock, which is what I use, because I don't really use DPI shift, I only use it to push to talk. Now, the next tab along is our Fusion Engine, essentially going to push the boundaries of the optical sensor inside of this mouse. Now, the G502 is probably going to be quicker than this, even with the Fusion technology, at least in my experience from using it. But using the sensor in this has obviously allowed them to bring down the price a little bit, and on top of the Fusion Engine has really just kept it a safe bet for us FPS players. And with it off here on the G240 mouse pad, if we go left to right, 2.8 and if we go ahead and put it on 4.2 now what I will say is playing Quake I did notice that if I was to flick shot at 21.5 centimeters with the fusion engine off and the only time it is off is when you're in this menu and set it to off the mouse map function it stopped moving and it was no good but with it on I noticed no increase in delay or anything like that the dry script worked as expected and the 4.2 meters per second was more than enough uh, for me. Now one interesting point to note, and I have seen some people complain about it on various forums, is that if I go ahead and clear it and move the mouse up and down, 2.6, and if I do it on this, about the same, again I can't really go too far, it's a very small mouse pad. Uh, point is, Fusion Energy doesn't appear to work on the vertical pane, but it's not a big deal because nobody flick shots into the sky, and if they do, it's not going to be as fast as that. If they flick shot, it's usually a 180 quickly behind them, and that's when the Fusion technology is really going to benefit. But anyway, it would be nice Logitech if they could look into this, is you know, is causing people to complain. So it only works on the horizontal level, and again, like I said, the mouse pad's a little small, but if I get rid of this and swap over to the QCK, just for science, of course, this is the mouse pad I usually use. It's bigger and I've got more space to work with. And I don't like my wrist on the edge of the pad. And we go ahead and turn the Fusion Engine off. We clear it. 2.8. I'd maybe able to get that faster if I really wanted to, but I don't want to ruin the camera position. And put it back on. 3.6. And again, I never hit 3.6. So, you know, no complaints whatsoever. Fusion engine working as it should. But yeah, that is the driver software. Um, let's go ahead, jump into some gameplay. Have a look at acceleration and my thoughts on the mouse and how it performs in game. So before jumping into some actual gameplay, I want to have a quick look at any acceleration potentially inherent on the sensor and have a quick look at the Fusion Engine technology. So we've got the SteelSeries QCK mousepad here. It's big and it's got a good thickness on it so I can get to the end of the mousepad and have it stop tracking. We position ourselves in this sort of edge of the wall here and we're going to move the mouse from the left to the right of the pad slowly and we should end up around about in the corner. And we're going to do it again for consistency and again there is a small amount of human error involved here as I move it all the way across the mouse pad but I find this is the best way to do it and again around about in the corner so we're going to do it a bit faster this time again about in the corner and even faster so about in the corner again so what we can essentially say there's next to no acceleration inherent in the sensor if there is any it's so small it's negligible and you'd say irrelevant so you can add your preferred amount and not have to worry about any inherent negative or positive that could prevent you from building up any potential muscle memory and also transitioning from game to game with slightly different sensitivities from getting a consistent feel for your mouse now the next thing i want to test is to quickly bring up the fusion technology tab here on the mouse which is actually the fourth one along what am I doing and we're going to turn it off for a minute and what I want to show you is when I flick shot at 21.5 centimeters you can see we kind of make it malfunction 
depending on how fast I go. Whereas if I go ahead and turn it on, we can see no problems whatsoever. And you can see how fast I'm moving the mouse there. If we go into this, we can see we're at 3.4. And I'm not going to go any faster than that when I flick shot as well. It would literally be doing this. And again, tracks all the way up to 4.1 this time on the QCK. So there's a slight variance depending on how fast I move it, obviously. But in other words, going to have no trouble with this mouse in game, at least from an out of game perspective. But yeah, let's go and have a look at actually how it performed in testing. So moving into gameplay, I should probably first mention that this is definitely a short segment of a long time playing with the mouse, because like with the G502, I've had the G402 for over a week now, and even been to an event between that and taken it with me and played on the booth, and I have to say, I cannot fault it in any way whatsoever. It's a fantastic mouse from the sensor, being used in the G100S combined with the gyro technology and the Fusion engine, pushing it past its initial limitations, just makes it a joy to play with in games like Quake Flick Shots are no problem with it, providing you don't have it disabled. And the only time it can be disabled is when you have that specific tab in the drivers open. But in other words, I like to see this technology go into future mice because what this essentially means is we no longer have to worry about the DPI race. Logitech clearly have a grasp on what smoothing is and how some of us don't want that increased latency or over-processed feel that smoothing offers. And I had no problems aiming in Quake 3 and Free and Aim Up, but I like to play with any new mouse. It gives me a very quick feel as to how responsive a product is. And on top of that, as always, Logitech have nailed the button latency side of things. Button response is extremely quick, no quabble whatsoever. Playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive, AWPing, AKing, M4ing, dealing, everything was a joy to do. And I've got to say, this is perhaps one of the best masks I've ever used in competitive gaming. It's definitely a mouse I could recommend to almost anybody, but it's not without its shortfalls because let's face it, the technology in the G502 in many ways is superior. They developed that specific sensor in cooperation with Pixar to do the job. And on top of that, you can enable prediction in the drivers. You can customize the liftoff distance to some extent through calibration to the surface on the G502. And on top of that, even though the max tracking speed of the G402 with the G100S sensor inside pushing it further, it's not as fast as the G502 in my opinion. So with that said, the G502 does still have its advantages, but it is a heavier mouse. So if you like a lighter mouse, I gotta say the G402 is absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, um, if I carry on, we're gonna go too far into my final thoughts conclusions. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into that. So final thoughts for the G402 Hyperion Fury Optical Gaming Mouse from Logitech. Well, I have zero complaints about this product whatsoever. I finally have a mouse that I can now switch from my Razer Depth out of 3.5G, which is discontinued, to. And that's a great thing, especially when you've got things like tournaments to worry about. You don't want to have to think about your mouse dying halfway through and then having nothing else to buy or switch to in a last minute kind of thing. So that's great. And finally, I can switch to something that has a great sensor that they developed. And on top of that, great button latency, which is something that you always want and it's not really I don't think focused on enough by some companies there's some products on the market that have really slow buttons and you can really tell the difference when you're firing and listening for the AK or the M4 shot to respond or the railgun in quake stuff like that so just having a quick mouse and not having to worry about it in the back of your head is a good thing in itself but in terms of this against the G502 who would be wanting the G502 or anyone that wants the free scrolling option like so. Anyone want the profile switching? Again, you can just do it in the drivers if you want to anyway. And on top of that, with the G402, you do get five DPI steps on your single profile. Uh, anyone who perhaps wants a braided cable. And finally, I would say, to some degree, the G502 is slightly comfortable for a pure palm grip user, simply because the right-hand side of the mouse does not slope inwards as steep as the G402. So when I grip this, my pinky finger actually comes underneath a whole lot more than when I do it on the G502, which I think is something to bear in mind. It does take, I would say, transitioning from my depth adder, it took me a little bit longer to get used to the G402 shape than it did the G502 shape. The 502 was instant, no difficulty whatsoever. The G402, sort of like an hour or so of playing, and then I just you know, didn't really mind it at all whatsoever. But that's just something to bear in mind. Now, a lot of people are going to look at these kind of mice and be like, well, this looks stupid. It looks a bit, you know, 
overcomplicated, but this is just a glossy streak through the mouse. It doesn't change the shape whatsoever. These buttons you do not accidentally click because they're just positioned very well. And on top of that, the sniper button on the side of the mouse does not get in the way whatsoever. And in fact, to some degree, I actually find it useless anyway, because it's almost too far I have to adjust my grip whilst I'm playing, because uh, that's like a pure palm grip. I can sort of roll my thumb on it, but again, that feels awkward. So to some degree, I don't even use the sniper button, and I would never use a sniper button. But for something like push to talk, that's actually a really cool place to have the button. So, you know. It's a good feature to have anyway, because it doesn't get in the way, at least from my hand size. Now, who am I going to recommend the G402? Absolutely everybody. The G502 is definitely more of a specialty product, because again, the weight is going to be important for some players like me that like lighter mice. But if you like heavier mice, the G502 will do absolutely everything and more. And honestly, I can't think of a reason to not buy the G502 if you don't mind a heavier product. But if you want a lighter product, I can't find a reason for you not to buy the G402. In fact, today, right now, the Logitech G402 and 502 are, in my opinion, the best gaming mice on the market. And, you know, that's not some small feat for me to go ahead and admit to, because I just had a tough time finding anything to replace my death adder. It's always felt like the most responsive mouse after the G after the G502. What am I about? After the Microsoft IntelliMouse 3.0 and WMO, after you overclock it to 500 hertz. And finally, I've got a replacement for the death adder. And that's, I think, the best compliment I can give both at the mice and definitely the G402 that I'm going to be switching to for the foreseeable future until maybe Logitech decide again to maybe fulfill my ultimate dream of a actual good death adder. But, you know, <laughs> what can you do? So, yeah, that's my, uh, I guess, final thoughts on the G402. Please go ahead, check it out on scam.co.uk. And any questions or comments, as always, just go ahead and leave them below. And hopefully, I don't have to send this back. I'm going to go send an email right now and uh, find out if I can keep it. So, yeah, cheers, guys, and catch you next time here on the Scam Pro Game.